Chapter 1. How about Dorothy and the Scarecrow, Lizzie asked. Hmm, Maria considered the idea. It would be great. Lizzie's eyes lit up. Buddy could be Toto. I could carry him in a picnic basket just like Dorothy does in The Wizard of Oz. Lizzie Peterson loved Halloween. It was fun to dream up great costumes, even though she usually ended up in something simple like a gypsy or a hobo. It was fun to be out in the streets of Littleton after dark on a fall evening, even though it was usually so cold or rainy that Mom made her wear a jacket over her costume. And, of course, it was fun to watch her trick-or-treat bag fill up little by little until it was bulging with candy, even though Lizzie and her brothers were only allowed to eat two pieces a day. By Thanksgiving, whatever was left was stale and hardly worth unwrapping and chewing. Halloween this year would be even more fun than usual for two reasons. First of all, Lizzie and her best friend Maria, and Charles, and the Bean, Lizzie's younger brothers, had been invited to ride on Chief Olsen's fire truck in the Littleton Halloween Parade. Lizzie knew Chief Olsen because her dad was a firefighter too, but the but the truck that they'd been riding on wasn't one of the town's regular fire trucks. No, this was a really cool antique fire truck that belonged to Chief Olsen. He kept it inside a giant garage behind his house. Lizzie could not wait to see how jealous everybody would be when they watched her drive by on a gleaming red truck with its shiny brass fittings. That's why she just had to come up with an especially good costume this year. The other reason Halloween would be special was because this year Buddy would be a part of it. Buddy was the Peterson's little brown puppy, and Lizzie loved him more than anything. The Peterson family had fostered lots of puppies who needed homes, taking care of them until they found the perfect forever family for each one. But although Buddy had started out as a foster puppy, he had ended up as a permanent member of the family, which still felt so, so amazing to Lizzie. She and Charles and the Bean, whose real name was Adam, had wanted a dog of their own for so long, and now they had one. Not only that, they had Buddy, the best dog ever. I love you, Buddy, Lizzie whispered right then into her puppy's silky ear. He was curled up all warm and sleepy on her lap at that very moment while she and her best friend sat at the kitchen table after school eating apples and string cheese and planning their costumes. Maria was still thinking about Lizzie's idea. She reached over and patted Buddy's soft fur. Why do you get to be Dorothy, she asked. What if I want to be Dorothy? Lizzie thought for a moment. Maybe the Wizard of Oz theme wasn't the best plan after all. Okay, how about this? We could be fairies. Buddy could be an elf or a toadstool or something. Maybe, Maria said, but I thought you said fairies were stupid costumes. What? Lizzie looked confused. During lunch today at school, remember? We were talking about costumes and you said how sick you were of everybody being fairies and how fairy costumes were totally over. Oh, right, Lizzie sort of remembered. Maria frowned at her. You don't even remember? You were spouting off opinions all over the place. Not that anybody even asked for your opinion. In fact, Sharna Garbeck told me afterward that she felt like an idiot because she had been planning on being a fairy. Oops. Oh, well. Lizzie shrugged and stuck her nose into the soft, sweet-smelling fur on Buddy's neck. She kissed him five times in a row. Buddy was so lovable. You know, Maria said. She looked down at the table and spoke very carefully. Sometimes I'm almost a little embarrassed when you do that. I mean, it's cool that you have strong opinions, but maybe it would be nice if you could wait until you're asked for your opinion instead of just offering it like that. Lizzie stared at Maria. You're embarrassed? She asked. Why? Because I'm your best friend, I guess. Maria frowned and waved her hand as if trying to get rid of a bad smell in the air. Look, forget it. Let's go back to talking about costumes. Lizzie did go back to talking about costumes, but she did not forget it. She couldn't. This was not the first time that somebody had told Lizzie that she was too outspoken. Her mom had said so more than once, and even her dad had mentioned it laughingly. That's our Lizzie, he'd say always has an opinion and she's always ready to share it as she and maria talked lizzie felt hot all over even though it was cool in the kitchen silently she vowed yet again to work harder at keeping her opinions to herself at least until somebody begged her for her thoughts hey charles came into the kitchen slamming the door behind him wait till you hear this one Maria and Lizzie both groaned. Lately, Charles and his best friend, Sammy, had been driving everybody crazy in a new way. It was bad enough when they were going through their knock-knock joke phase, but now they had decided to write a book. 101 Dog Jokes, it was going to be called. Lizzie figured she had already heard about 501. Okay, ready? 
Charles asked. He was already giggling. What kind of dog does Dracula have? He finally managed to squeak out the question. Charles was always his own best audience. I give up, Lizzie said. Me too, Maria agreed. A bloodhound, Charles crowed. He cracked up, barely seeming to notice that the two girls were groaning, not laughing. That's definitely one for the book, still laughing. He went to the fridge to look for a snack. Where's Sammy? Lizzie asked. Home. Charles mumbled around a mouthful of grapes, working on his poster for Fire Prevention Week. He really wants to win the contest this year. Lizzie and Maria had already made their posters, even though they both knew that Noah Burke would win the contest in their grade. He always did. Noah was the best art artist at Littleton Elementary. Where are Mom and in, in the Bean? Charles asked. Upstairs, Mom's working on an article and the Bean's taking a nap. Mrs. Peterson was a reporter for the Littleton newspaper. Lizzie held up a hand. Toss me one of those grapes. Charles tossed. Lizzie caught the grape and ate it. Yum. Trying to get one in my mouth, she said. She opened wide and Charles lobbed a grape in a high arc. It missed by a mile. Buddy tried to scramble off Lizzie's lap to chase after the grape. Oh, no, you don't, said Lizzie, holding him tightly. Maria knelt down to find the grape, which had rolled under the table. Lizzie and Maria had recently learned on the internet that grapes were not good for dogs. Just then, the doorbell rang. Who's that? Lizzie asked. Hardly anybody ever used the front door at their house. Lizzie, can you see who's there? Mom called from upstairs. Lizzie put Buddy down and headed for the door. Buddy followed right at her heels. You stay inside, she told him, holding him back with her foot as she opened the door. There on the porch stood Sammy for, from next door, along with his mom. Sammy was grinning. His mom was not. She was holding a braided leather leash, and at the other end of the leash was a puppy. A panting, pulling puppy. We just found this guy tied to an apple tree in our front yard, said Sammy's mom. I think whoever left him didn't have the address quite right, she added. She handed the lease to Lizzie along with a big white envelope. The envelope was addressed to the people who take care of puppies.